The permanent dipole in a covalent bond between a hydrogen atom and a fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen atom is particularly strong. Thus, the attraction between the electron deficient H delta positive of one molecule and the lone pair of electrons on a fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen atom of another molecule is much stronger than the permanent dipole-dipole attraction mentioned before between the two hydrogen chloride molecules. This particular type of dipole-dipole attraction between the electron deficient H delta positive of one molecule and the lone pair of electrons on a fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen atom of another molecule is given the special name of hydrogen bond. So, a hydrogen bond is the attraction between the H delta positive of one molecule and the delta negative on the lone pair of a fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen atom of a neighbouring molecule. Even though a hydrogen bond has only about 5% the strength of a covalent bond, it does have a significant effect on the physical properties of compounds. For example, were it not for hydrogen bonds, both water and alcohol would be gases at room temperature and pressure. Now we look at the dative bond, also known as coordinate bond. The dative bond actually is referred to covalent bond, where the electron pair that is shaped comes from the one atom only. Examples 1. Oxygen atom achieves octet electron arrangement and hydrogen atom achieves stable duplet electron arrangement in the water molecule. Hydrogen ions does not have any electrons in the shells. The lone pair of the electrons that are not involved in the covalent bond in the water molecules will be shaped with the hydrogen ions through the formation of dative bond. In the hydroxonium ions, oxygen atom and all the hydrogen atoms have achieved stable octet and duplet electron arrangement respectively. So in this case, the oxygen atom becomes the donor and hydrogen ions becomes the acceptor. Example 2, we talk about the ammonia. In the ammonia, nitrogen atom achieves octet electron arrangement and hydrogen atom achieves the duplet electron arrangement in the ammonia molecule. Hydrogen ions does not have any electrons in the shell. The lone pair of electrons that are not involved in the covalent bond in the ammonia molecule will be shared with hydrogen ions through the formation of dative bond. In the ammonium ions, nitrogen atom and all the hydrogen atom have achieved stable octet and duplet electron arrangement respectively. Ammonia is the donor and the hydrogen ions is the acceptor. Metals are malleable. This means that they can be molded into different shapes. Metals are very ductile. This means that they can be stretched into wires. To fully understand these properties of metals, we must understand metallic bonding. When we talk about metallic bonding, we are actually describing the electrostatic attraction between the metal ions arranged in a lattice structure and the free-floating electrons around them. Since these electrons are free to move around, the term sea of electrons is also used. What is a lattice structure? And where have you heard this term before? The term lattice structure means that there is a regular repeating pattern. We have heard this term before when discussing ionic lattices. It is used to describe the alternating positions of the metal and nonmetal ions. In metallic structures, however, there are only metal ions. These metal ions are arranged side by side in a regular repeating pattern. The free-floating electrons act like a glue and hold the structure in place. This is a very strong attraction and explains why metals have high melting and boiling points. A lot of heat energy is needed to overcome this attraction. 
This is also why metals are very good conductors of heat. Free floating electrons are the reason why metals can conduct electricity. Metals are malleable and ductile because no matter what shape the metal takes, the free floating electrons will conform to that shape. The strong electrostatic attraction will remain, and therefore the structure stays intact. Let's think about it cars and bicycles, trains, planes, buildings, cutlery, spectacles, furniture, and endless items can be made from metals.